just a, a few words this afternoon about what you need in terms of resources. And that's going to sound like I'm going to prescribe something and I'm really not. I'd like to know from you, based on the experience you've had, what would be some helpful things for you as you look at the formation of Circles of Redemptorist Associates and the, 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 the formation of the professed for partnership and mission? So thinking about those two things, the big question I'd have, like obviously we have some things we can offer you, but that's only one side of the picture. What do you think you really need? And based on your experience. So what I'm going to ask you to do is to get into groups of three or four and have a conversation about what formation has looked like so far in your setting and what, ha what have you found helpful? And then the next question is, so what have you found helpful? And then what would you find helpful? Because my job is to support you and create and build with you resources and tools that would be helpful. That's one of the things. Now, that can be print and paper process kinds of resources. Uh, it can be like session outlines. It can be retreats. It can be Zoom meetings. So think broader than hand me a piece of paper. <laughs> And, and what would, so what, based on what you have found helpful, what would be helpful moving into the future? And what can we, what should we, be, what should we be starting to think about building together? So three or four people together, you'll have about five, six minutes, and then we'll come back into the large group and have a chat about what, what's been helpful, what would be helpful. I'm going to walk videos, the 16 videos that you, you all helped create and put together were and tremendous. Start in. And, and start in. And start in. <laughs> were a tremendous uh, a help for our formation process. And in fact, we talked about the, the one that I remember that you were involved in, I think both of you were involved in, was Luke uh, 4, 16 to 20. That's the title of the video. And uh, we used that in one of the circle meetings, and we talked about it, and that helped us come together with a common understanding of, the, of what being a Redemptorist associate was all about. So this was really a terrific tool. It was wonderful. So our group actually, I thought, had some really good ideas. So Christine really encouraged about a common retreat, whether that be where we all come together in one place, for that common retreat, or there's a common retreat that's then done in multiple areas, either by a professed redemptorist or an associate who is willing to go and do those retreats. And then um, we just said a list of the St. Alphonse's common songs. We've been singing them here, and there are a few of us, and I'm part of that group, but someone else said that aren't, don't know them. And so to provide that cohesiveness and the collectiveness and that oneness um, with other groups, what other groups are doing in their circles, how can we share that with different groups so that we can participate in what others have found to be successful and how to do it, kind of supporting what you said about the, the videos. And um, being all being able to get access to the newsletters, or whatever common regular communications that the Redemptorists have in their community. And um, let's see, Zoom training, oh my goodness, so that we could benefit from that resource. How do we um, do it, and what's the best way of utilizing that resource to um, bring that collectiveness? Mm -hmm. And then um, a calendar of events so that we could, uh, so people as lay, as the laity with the other involvements of jobs and personal responsibilities so that we could in a timely fashion be able to participate, you know, in advance. So our group had a little a brief wish list. Um, we would appreciate lesson plans, especially focused on St. Alphonsus's life. So the prep time for the materials that are spoken of at the, the weekly, monthly meetings Take, the prep time takes longer maybe than the actual presentation and discussion. So if there was some summary, or maybe even if we all sh pulled it together, then we could share each other's um, prayer books um, that 
there are a few prayers in that little red book, but perhaps something that has more. Um, and then if we can get at a compilation of reflection questions, like the ones that you're offering us, that we can then give to our groups. Um, and then we were exploring the value of, on a small group basis, check-ins. I was speaking to Winnipeg um, as a best practice for, um, for all the groups, that between prayer reflection, that we talk about you know, what's going on in your life, what, what's working, what's not working, concerns, and then we can work from there as a group to resolve some of the questions. So, thank you. We got our group initially started after uh, um, probably three or four sessions, and we were in contact with Anne, and we're going back and forth on emails and with Ann. So we decided to have a night with Ann Walsh. And that worked really, really well. So we, we had in here, we had Ann there facing us on the uh, computer. She got her hair done. She bought yeah. Dress. She was facing us on the computer. Yeah, the bottoms on the bottom and nice, yeah. and nice on top. And, uh, we were all we were we formed a big semicircle facing her, and we had a night with Ann Walsh. That worked really, really. It really brought a lot of uh, solidity to us as a group. You know, yeah. it, it really fun. helped. So that's something I think as a group gets starts getting formed. That's a good thing to do, and you can do it from anywhere. Anywhere, anywhere you can do it. Anywhere. So that what we did in, with the Life Directions group with uh, Father John Phelps is over the period of about a year. We went and reflected on the charisms of the Redemptorist, and then we came up with questions each month, reflection questions that we had. Uh, so we developed them over a period of a year, and they all are based on the charisms of the Redemptorist. So that's what our group in Detroit does as far as its reflection right now. So we meet once a month, and we select a question for the next month to reflect on and share, and that's how we do our reflection. So it's... It's, it's, there's a list of about, there's four sort of areas that we reflect on each month, one on personal level, one with the strangers that we reach out to, uh, one with uh, friends and family, and then with God. And so, and that's sort of our basis for our reflection. But it's it's worked out pretty well, and we're actually going to use it in a, just a different rotation in the next year, so we come up with different questions to use to share it with the group. On our meeting. Would you be willing to share that with me so I could? Yep. Kinda, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I'll tell you something else from the general level that we've been asked to do is begin to pool resources at that level too. So, like anything you would send to me, I'll be sending. Um, no, not we won't name individuals or things, but we're going to create a bank of resources on the website, the CSSR website in Rome, that will support. Um, the directory, the new directory as it, and the Ratio as they're being developed. So um, we'll, we'll do some work with that. So there's a, it's more than us who are looking at pooling resources. And so we might be able to have access to a much broader base too in different languages. <laughs> I feel like we do have a wealth of resources and the CSSR network of websites, even for me, can be overwhelming. Like, I'm not sure all the time where to go to find what I'm looking so for. Weird. So I know there's CSSR.net, and I know Mario. Is that the one you're working on, Mario? But I was wondering if, ideally, there would be, even for the North American conference, one place where we would have everything accessible. Is that just a dream? Is that Am I just being completely unrealistic? <laughs> I can speak to that, and Jack can too. No, it's not unrealistic, and it's happening. Because um, oh, and one last thing, yeah. and then I'll. No, no. Because every site has a different navigation mm -hmm. and different terminologies, and I, I find it myself confusing. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm gonna say. So no, that that's a really good point. That as we get more stuff on the go, we're gonna need to be more consistent with our delivery too. So Charlie ha Worley has a new website in, de in development for the, North, the, co the Conference of North America. And our uh, Partnership and Mission website will be housed with a link from there. So the idea would be to make sure that it's, it's either a similar navigation style or a consistency right there. So yeah, we'll, we'll have a chat with everybody about that. And the idea would be that every unit in North America has uh, can be accessed from that page. So one of the benefits of having a new director of communications is going to be that we'll begin to pull those things together 
right? And the the plethora of blogs that are out there too yeah. is sometimes a bit hard to, to get a sense of either. So yeah, it's a huge network. Some are really good and some less so. But in North America and uh, with the blog that Jose and Therese are doing, I've been trying to put that on our Facebook page every time they write something. But um, that would be really good to access to some of the good blogs. Can I curate them a little bit? And yeah. Okay, this is not the last of that conversation. So I've taken notes of everything you've said and we'll try to begin to do some of that. Um, I want to show you what I'm going to give you today in terms of some of these are session outlines, some are handouts. Um, you know we have a North American uh, newsletter for Partners in Mission. And the idea for that is A, to share good news stories, but B, it's to kind of provide some formation for individuals, but also in every, or just about every newsletter, there's something you could actually base a meeting on for a group of Redemptorist Associates if you wanted to. It's not a session outline per se, but there's always a story or three or four that you could build a meeting around, should you want to. Like, for example, in the last issue, um, we did um, the thing about what inspires you about November 9th. I mean, that could be a great session for what inspires you in this group. Um, then there were three stories about redemptorist missions, um, common or what we think of as traditional redemptorist works. And they were, there were, either any one of those is worth a conversation as a group. So with, with a few reflection questions, they could become a meeting. So there, the idea of the newsletter is, yeah, to keep us in touch with one another, but also to provide a resource that we can we can share. So today, I'm going to give you some things you, you may already have in other formats, but I keep trying to organize things better. So this is, you're going to get a, a, a thumb drive. People are always asking me, where is that in a communicanda, or what's a communicanda? <laughs> so communicanda are the formal letters that come out from the general government. So I put... The, everything from a, from Communicanda 4 onward into one place so that you'd have access to some of Some are really good. Um, you know, there's Communicanda on redemption that you could easily study as a group, not a book study per se, but take pieces of, the, of a Communicanda and read it through together and say, what does our Redemptorist family think about this? How do we frame our thoughts and our activity around that? Hang on. So there, there'll be a, a file. So these are just organized into files on the thumb drive. So a bunch of communicanda. And then there, there actually is a CSSR lectionary and supplement that has prayers for the Mass and other prayers for every feast day. So you can have access to that. Um, and that would be thanks to Wendy and Ray Corival. So we have that. Um, then there'll be um, some documents. So, so I'll show you what will be there. So you'll see that uh, called into communion for mission is there. So that's the 2009 document. There's communicanda four, but there's also something Lucy talked about. There's communicanda four with some reflection questions. So it's broken up. So you can actually work through the first document pretty well together. Called into communion for mission was written as a study document. So all throughout it, there are study guide questions for individuals or for groups. So you can use that for groups as well. Um, and that really what it does is it explores two fundamental issues, communion and mission, theological issues that underpin what we're doing. And David was part of the writing of that. There are a couple of PowerPoints there on the history and the documents. Um, and then there's called into communion and mission for mission in Portuguese and Spanish in case you need that. Um, and there's a PowerPoint there on the constitutions and statutes and what a lay person might want to know about the Redemptorist constitutions and statutes. So that's in the documents file. These are the North American guidelines. So there's a guidelines file, and it's the North American guidelines for Redemptorist Associates. And there's a draft of a brochure that sort of introduces Redemptorist Associates if you want to use it in your invitation process. This is a whole set of, of handouts that I've been working on. Um, and mostly they're PDFs, not always, but uh, sometimes they're in two formats so that you can edit them if you want to. So there'd be a Word version and a, and a PDF version. But there's like a con the calendar. Now you talked about a calendar. It wasn't the one you talked about. A calendar of, of Redemptress Feasts. 
And then there's um, a guide to Alphonsian meditation that you can use individually or with a group. Uh, there's a handout on the historic places. You know, we talked about the culture. And I remember first when I was I involved with Redemptorists, and I'd wonder, they'd be talking about a place like Pagani. And I'd say, what, what's Pagani? Or they talk about Shirani, and I didn't have a clue, and I'd feel, I'd just smile and go, oh, yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, when Pat Sinus in Canada was becoming a lay missionary, we used to sit together at sessions, and I'd whisper into her ear. By that time, I knew the lingo, and I'd w whisper into her ear what these things meant, and we created this thing. We, we called it a dictionary, but this is what it really became. Right? It was God, places and, and terms. Um, there's a, a handout on... Uh, people you might have heard of. Who's Jack Kingsbury? He's actually on the handout. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> who's Mike Braille? Who's, who's the, the, so just who's who? Who are the provincials in North America? That kind of thing. Um, then there's the Redemptor Saints and Blessed. There's a biography of St. Alphonsus tucked in there. The four, there's a handout on the four pillars that you could use to talk over. With, or give after a session or something. Um, how's the Redemptor's world organized? What do you mean conferences and units? And what's a unit? And how's a unit different from a province? Um, the works of the, the kind of uh, handout on the works of the congregation and Alphonse's idea of the virtues of the month. So just some kind of traditional things that you could use if you want to, it's an easy meeting or an easy follow-up to a meeting. There's a file that has uh, the uh, an outline, a word outline for the initial retreat and the follow-up sessions, but this would would be the what what we might see as some of the basic topics you'd want to cover in initial formation. Um, not all of them, and they don't all have to be covered before enrollment, but in that those first stages, things like Alfon like a biography of Alphonsus. So there's a good short biography of Alphonsus there. It's the, the article, the PDF at the top, and that's thanks to Wendy again in Ligori. So there's a really good article on Alphonsus and his times that's short and accessible. It's easy to read. It's not 400 pages, and it's, it's good. Um, and then there are sessions, and you talked about session outlines. So I'm going to show you what they look like. So let's just randomly take the first one. It's Alphonsus. Oh, no, I won't take the first one because that's a prayer service. Uh, Let's do the session number one. What you'll see there, you can edit. These are just all Word documents. They're not meant to be followed slavishly, but if you need help setting up a lesson plan, they're all done as lesson plans. So you can do it yourself or as a group. So, And you'll see that there are about 35 of these spread over the files. So uh, this one will be Alphonsus, His Life, Impact, and Legacy. And the handout that the, the article that I showed you at the beginning of this is to go with this, uh, this, this gathering. So things you might put in your center of beauty, or your, uh, David always calls it the center of beauty, so it's a nod to David. So we'll always remember David. The handouts that you would need, but the handouts are in this file. You don't have to go looking for them. And then, uh, and then every session goes through an adult, it's based on an adult learning style kind of model. So it follows four steps, experience, reflection, input or generalization, and then where do we go from here? Okay. So it's four steps, and you'll always see that. So the experience will be a prayer sometimes. The reflection is ask people what image of the Holy Spirit presented by Alphonsus in that prayer speaks to you. And the generalization is learning a bit about Alphonsus takes that article and takes Alphonsus' life under headings and they're chronological. So you wouldn't do it in one, one night. You could, but you'd be kind of dashing through. Take as long as you need. So every one is based like that. Right? So it's, like I said, it's about 35 sessions. There's initial and ongoing formation, but they're all planned out to look like you can actually use them, but adapt them. They're not meant to be, this is the way it must be. That would be kind of crazy, right? So if you had a, if, if you were feeling like I don't really know what to do to lead a group, that might ease some of that. That's the ideal. These are all redemptor saints. So there's, there's a session mapped out, like you just saw, for every redemptor saint or group of blessed. Right. So there's one on the Spanish martyrs and there's one on the Ukrainian martyrs, but there's a separate one on Trichka and a separate one on Velichkovsky. 
and then all you know the, the usuals, <laughs> Alphonsus, Clement, um, Gaspar Stan Gassinger, uh, Gerard Magella, uh, Maria Celeste. I, you know what? I'm not sure there is one on Maria Celeste. If there isn't, that's an oversight, and I'll put it in at David's suggestion. I think that's there. The <laughs> is it there? I think it might be. Isn't that? M- yeah, it is. Yeah, the fourth one is her, so I was smarter than I thought. Okay. Yeah, so there you go. And then there's a separate, uh, b- the, uh, kind of a detailed biography of the Spanish martyrs, and David did that. So we tucked it on there. They were made for associates. They were made as we, st- if, as uh, I just thought, if, you're, if I'm going to develop these for the group at St. Teresa's or for, the, you know, the group in Sudbury, whatever, why not keep them and, and keep improving them? So it's gradually. Oh, no problem. And this uh, this is a, a prayer services and resources. So all of those are prayer services or prayers that you can use uh, for different times of the year or in different themes, you know. Some of them are short ones that you could start a meeting. Some could be a whole meeting. All the newsletters, and they're there in Word and uh, PDF. So if you wanted to lift one, you could. And if you want to use it yourself to keep organizing the newsletters I send out, you can just use these for your own, you know, to, and keep adding to them. So there's a newsletter at the middle of every month, and sometimes there's an extra one just for fun. If you're not on my mailing list, you will be after today. And let me know, if somebody wants to be directly, you can email that newsletter to anybody, but it's just a resource that's sent out kind of randomly to Partners in Mission and Profess Redemptorists. If you want to be on that mailing list or if you want somebody else to be on it, let me know and I'll add them to the list. The Tucson Gathering. So um, the, any of the PowerPoints that I had in advance, but you can add extra ones. Some of the leaders now will email you uh, their PowerPoints, so feel free to add them to this. You'll, you'll have it. Uh, the prayer service that we did, the brochure that advertised the workshop, uh, and, and any, like I said, any PowerPoints that we had. So there, that'll be in terms of resources. So that combined with what you've suggested is a real good work plan for me for the next little bit. So I'll, I'll try to act on some of these, but you go away with all of this. But One Body is a good resource too. Um, it's, it, so anybody who doesn't know it, it comes out from the general government, from the offices or the Center for Redemptive Spirituality in Rome. And it, the idea was it would come out once a month, but that hasn't been the case. So um, what I can do is, as soon as I receive it, um, and sometimes if it's in English, I'll get to edit it before it goes back, you know, sometimes. So I'll make sure it gets to you if I get it. I want to make one last comment, and then Wendy, Wendy and Greg. The one last comment is this. All of this stuff is for you. Um, the best resource you have is one another. And to be sharing and sharing notes and keep on talking about what works well, what you want to see, and be in communication with me. But I think paper stuff and things like that you can put on a thumb drive, that's one thing. But the best resource we have is one another and the sharing of our ideas and most of all our enthusiasm.